Hey everyone, welcome back to a Vintage Vanity. Second dress in the So So Vintage series. How great is that? I'm really excited. You can probably tell by the title and the beginning slate that we chose the 1946 dress, which um, we are going to do the 1956 dress after this one because I'm having so much fun with this series. I really just want to keep it going and believe me, I've got a ton of patterns, uh, uh, Vogue and McCall's and that. We're having like a big sale on their website one day and I bought a ton. So we've got plenty of dresses to go. So the next one we're going to do is the 1956. So with that grand reveal, let's go ahead and get started on how to start up the 1946 dress. Okay, so the first thing that you need to figure out when you're doing your pattern, as we talked about in the last video, and that's the thing is there is going to be some crossover between some of the things I said in the last video and some of the things I said in this video. Just because I don't want somebody to feel like they have to watch all the videos to get all the learning, but I want you guys who have seen the last video not to feel like you're watching the same video over again. So, the first thing we're going to do with our pattern is you want to take your measurements, your bust line, your waistline, and your hip line. Now, keep it very tight to the skin because the um, measurements on the pattern actually a lot for, you know, uh, movement room. So when you're taking your measurements, you don't want to take them like big in the sense that, well, I want to be able to move around. You want to actually take them right up to the skin and get your true measurements. Now, not many people will actually match the measurements on the pattern. So to select what pattern size you're going to start with, you're going to take your largest measurement and you're going to go with that. For me, for me that's my waist on the measurement chart here because both my bust and my hips are actually in the size lower, but my waistline is the size larger. <laughs> and I think that, um, you know, vice versa might be the same. I think that's the same for a lot of people. Now when we look at the patterns, we might actually decide to trim down the skirt area to actually match more of our, our hip area. Because if you remember when I did the last dress, I said the skirt was a little bit too full for my liking. Um, and it kind of, in the back, it kind of had a little bit of extra fabric back there. So with this one, I'm going to actually try to address that this time around by slimming down the skirt area since I do fall into the smaller size there. And then for the bust line as well, because this has that fabulous wrenching, I don't want it to be so baggy. I want it to actually fit right onto my bust line. So we're actually going to try as well to slim the bust line down a little bit. But we won't know that until we actually delve into the pattern how we're going to do that exactly. So we are going to resize some of those pieces. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to, in post-production, <laughs> place up a picture right here of the back of the pattern envelope so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. When you're picking out your fabric, the first thing you want to do is look at the dress section. Here on ours it says dress and belt. And you'll notice a line for 45 and for 60. Um, my fabric is actually 54 inches wide. Uh, the 45 and the 60 means the width of the, of the fabric. So when you're actually at the fabric store, if you look at the, the description on the end of the bolt, it will tell you exactly how wide that fabric is. Mine happens to be 54 inches. So what I did was I went with, with the 45 inch measurements. So what you want to do is you want to line it up with your size. And this is where selecting your largest size is going to come in because you want to make sure you have enough fabric. So you select that and then um, you get that amount of fabric. So if you're a size 18 and the width of your fabric is 45 inches, you're going to get three yards of fabric. Say your sizing takes you into a size that is not listed on the pattern. Say either you're uh, above a 22 or below an 8. What you want to do is you just want to notate like how much difference there is between each sizing. So there's usually about an eighth of an inch difference between each size. 
So however many sizes you have to go up or go down, keep that in mind and then it just increase the amount of yardage that you get. Uh, the, the reason is that you don't want to have to go back and get more fabric just because if you do, there's a good chance it could come off a separate bolt, which means the dye could be a little bit different and you could see some differentiation between the two fabrics. So always try to get all of your fabric in one fell swoop, even if you have to get a little bit more than you might think you need. This also calls for sew-in interfacing, and if you're size 8, let's follow that down, and you're going to get one yard. That's on a 25-inch bolt of interfacing. I actually have some interfacing from another project that I'm doing, making some aprons, and uh, this, is, this is the interfacing that I got for that project. Essentially, interfacing is a specially designed fabric that you put on the back of your fabric to give it a little more shape and support. So there is a different couple, couple different types of interfacing you can get. This is fusible, which means I can actually iron it onto the back of my fabric. I don't have to stitch it on. I would actually recommend fusible. It's a little bit easier to work with. And like I said, you can just iron it right onto the back of your fabric and then cut everything away. That will let you, gives you an idea of what interfacing is. Also on our pattern, we have uh, shoulder pads, cotton batting. Okay, I actually have some, a, bu a bunch left from a, a, another project. And this is just batting. This is actually a polyester fiber fill. This is just going to be used for the shoulder pads, so I'm probably just going to use this for the shoulder pads. And it is uh, a rip away. So that's the batting. Um, the lining for the, it also calls, as you see, for a quarter, um, a yard of lining for the shoulder pads. I'm actually going to see how we end up with this, because if I have enough left out of the fabric that we chose, I'm just going to use that for my shoulder pads because you know what if they <laughs> if they actually like poke out or they get seen or something it'd be nice if they actually match the dress if I don't have enough of this I actually have some some just nice uh, black cotton that that I would use just so you just don't want to go with something like white where it's going to stand out like horribly against this that is if we go back to our picture that is the um, kind of that whole little sizing section. And right underneath that, we have the fabric se section. It's always gonna give you suggested fabrics. Of course, I didn't listen to their suggested fabrics. <laughs> so what I did is I went ahead and got rayon. <laughs> I think it gives the, the same lightweight feel as a linen. It drapes just absolutely lovely, just like a nice lightweight jersey would. Wonderful. And plus, look at this pattern. I love this pattern, but I love it. I actually have hair flowers that are exactly like this, so I thought that would be nice, little tiger lilies. All right, so that's our fabric. We are going to wash this because, again, you always want to make sure to wash your fabric because you don't want it shrinking on you after you've made the dress. Um, and that way it will shrink, shrink, shrink away, and then you can you can cut. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, now... Right in that same fabric section, you'll notice in, in bold, it says belt interfacing hair canvas. I don't know if this belt interfacing is the same as that sew-in interfacing they were referencing, but if it is, they were calling for um, over a yard of that. And as you can see, this is not a yard of fabric. The reason for that is it's a very thin belt. I only need a very small strip and the yard goes this way so I would end up having a huge amount of this hair canvas for a very very small project so I talked to the lady at the fabric store she was absolutely wonderful and she said you know what get a smaller piece cut the strips out and just attach them so I'm not really sure how that's gonna work yet but we're going to figure that out when we get there because let me tell you this hair canvas was more expensive than my fabric this was like 10 bucks a yard my fabric was seven dollars a yard so yeah yeah so she saved me a little bit of money there so we are going to we'll see how that works out 
And then on here as well, it says notions for both the dress and the belt. I haven't gotten a lot of these notions, and when I do, I'll go back and we'll address them. Um, it's asking for seven snaps, one hook and eye, or a 12-inch zipper. Um, we probably will go with the zipper because even though some of you think that zippers are evil, I love sewing them. Um, so we'll probably go with a zipper. And then it asks for a 9x16 tearaway stabilizer. And this is the tearaway stabilizer. You'll notice it's a little bit thicker than the other interfacing. Uh, and I think the big difference to uh, the tearaway stabilizer is you can rip the fabric. This is not feasible, so we cannot iron it on. So, and quite honestly, at this point, I'm not sure what it's going to be for. It is, again, like the interfacing going to give support, help shape and support your fabric. The seam, optional seam binding. I'm going to see where that actually, since it is optional, I'm going to see where they're actually calling for that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wash my fabric. I'm so in love with this fabric, you guys. You have no idea. And then I'm going to take my, my pattern pieces. And again, like we talked about before, because these are all folded up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to iron these out. And then we're going to start getting into actually cutting out the pattern pieces, laying everything out, and getting to start making our second dress. That is it for this edition of So So Vintage. I hope you guys are really excited about this dress. Thanks everybody who voted. Honestly, it was a really close race. I think it was only like one or two votes that separated the two dresses. That's crazy. And there were so many, so I really appreciate your feedback. And um, I hope you guys find this one as useful as the last one. I don't know. I guess I guess my big question for this next series is do you guys want more detail? Do you actually want to see more of the stitching as I go through the process? Or did you like the way we did it before where it just kind of was tips and kind of troubles as I went through, troubleshooting, that kind of thing? Um, or do you want to see more detail? So let me know in the comments section below. And... As always, an easy way to show your support of Vintage Vanity is to click thumbs up. Let me know you like what's going on. And if you haven't already done so and you want to know when new videos are posted so you don't miss a moment of this dress being created, go ahead and click on the subscribe button. That will let you know when new videos are up. And I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.